Bezat Hashem, Naseh, Venatziach. I want to welcome you to our final class of Igeret Ateshuva. Baruch Hashem took us about 17 or 18 classes to get here. Uh, it is a great beginning, a uh, great middle, great end. Um, a very enjoyable trip. This is a journey of Sefer B'Tsuri Arom, the book that has the commentary from Rav Yor Michael Abergel of Baal Atanya, as well as the additional commentary by Rav Israel Abergel Shlita. Uh, as we completed all 12 chapters last week, but it's always necessary or, or recommended that once you learn, it's good to do a review. And once you do a review, it's, it becomes more etched in your mind. Keep in mind that every time when we learn, every beginning of every class, we sort of like go back before we go forward. I always use that part of the class to be part of a, a review, a chazara, because once we review it once, twice, three times, or at least four times, surely it will be etched in our minds the way Hazal tell us that in the bare minimum we need four. So tonight is going to be a full review of all 12 chapters. I don't know how it's going to be. It's a lot of concepts and a lot of Torah that is given over at one time. But nevertheless, I feel that we can trace back this journey, almost like map out chapter one all the way to chapter 12, because it was an evolution. It was like a graduation. We slowly evolved from Teshuvah del Tata, the deeper understanding, Teshuvah del Ela, and of course, the, you know, the, the, the final chapter, uh, when the Rav finished off with the famous words, so before, we, so before we get started on this full review, I'd like to give uh, some honorable mentions and dedications to the following people. May Azat Hashem first that this class will be to the Ilu Nishmat of David ben Zohara, Yaniv ben Rina, Michel ben Zohara, Aviv ben Vivi, Abraham Yosho ben Sultana, Simon ben Alia, Mazal bat Luna, Meir ben Rebecca, Sultana ben Frecha, Yitzhak ben Tzeviya, as well as Crunchy Bat Brindle. Also, this should be to the Refua Shalema of Amram ben Zohara, Lavi Rafael ben Olga, Daniel bat Mazal, Yaakov ben Dina, Gabriel ben Mashiach, Keren Chaba bat Dona, Nir ben Yehudit, Chaya Yael Shoshana bat Chana Fredo, Lea Sarid bat Yael Shindo, Heleni Orna bat Chen Chana, Ahuva Bat Shendo, Shaul Yosef Ben Garaz, and also to Refua Shelema and Shmira Haguna, Bechola Inyanim, Leenav Bat Larisa, Vesara Miriam Bat Hina Rivka, Vesara Bat Esther, Bat Esther, also. I'd like to give an honorable mention to our sponsors. First and foremost, she's Baruch Hashem Bliya She's on the list all the time. Our good friend Yudid Ben Shabbat. Hashem Barechotah, Samechotah. Ezad Hashem that Hashem bless you and your children to be healthy, holy, go higher and higher in Avodat Hashem, Bliya Rida. Ezad Hashem, Hashem may bless you to always be on the side of the giving. As, uh, as we can see that in this Siyum party, we had a little bit more of the a little bit more extra accoutrement, a little bit more of the nuts and the candies and the sushi and the drinks and the wine. Thank you so much for, uh, for sponsoring that, as well as uh, our uh, another special individual who is dedicating tonight's class and is one of the main sponsors of the Siyum. Be'ezat uh, Hashem, that this class will be to the Refuah Sherema of Shimshon Mordechai Ben Miriam. Issachar HaKohen Ben Rocher, Yehudit Chaya Bat Eit Aleya, Binyamin Ben Chana, Yaakov Moshe Gershon Ben Zelda Rivka, Eliyahu Ben Choma, and blessing to the following people for peace, happiness, health, success, Panasa, and Nachat in all aspects of life. Sprintza Bat Achel, Yached Bat Sprintza, Zalman Aharon Ben Sprintza, Shira Aviva Bat Devor Amir, Abraham Moshe Ben Devor Amir, Yehoshua Yaakov Lefim Ben Devor Amir, and a good Shiduch, Mishor Shishmatam, to Yahid Bat Sprintza, Yeshua Yaakov Levi Ben Devor Amiro. And may the following couple move their 
the lead hatzlacha to meshane makor, meshane mazal, to gisel beila bat chaya sara and isachar kohen ben rochel, and also for refuah shelema liyao ben alis. Baruch Hashem. That uh, first of all, for our anonymous sponsors, Hashem varich ota v'sameach ota, give her health, wealth, happiness, v'chab atzlacha. Uh, success and happiness in all that she does and Be'ezat Hashem Shidu Chagun Mishorish Nishmata and Be'ezat Hashem also always be on the side of the given uh, truly appreciate you learning and also sponsoring with us also I can't go without giving a heartfelt thank you to all the ones that have been learning with us from the beginning and that is Shakira, Jalia, Desiree, Avia, Gabriel uh, Sarah, um, uh, was it, uh, Tamar, for learning with us, Yehudit Ben Shabbat, and all the people, uh, Yosef, even though he's not here, he's been with us the entire class, but nevertheless, uh, and also, just so you can, just so you can understand, Hazal tell us, anyone who comes to the, to the Siyum, anybody who participates in the completion, in the completion of a learning, they get the credit as if they learned the entire uh, the entire learning with us as well. So Sarah, Miriam, welcome on your first class as part of the CU. You get credit for everything. Wow. Thank you. Today's 17th class, yes, Tov. Huh? Today's 17th class, yes, Tov. 17 is Tov. Okay. We always get credit upstairs. Okay. Amen. All right, let's get started. If you recall, this all started a long, long, long time ago when we spoke about the introduction to Balatanya's book. For, first of all, for uh, Rabbi Shneur Zama Miladi with his book, the, uh, the Tanya, which has a section in it called the Gerita Tshuva, which is what, this is what we were learning. However, as an introduction to what we're doing over here, as we dabble in Tanya, which is considered Hasidut, there was a parable that was used which was a king that had a sick child. And the only thing that could save this sick child was this precious jewel. And this precious jewel had to get crushed up and fed to the child little by little, little by little. And only if you find this real special jewel and crush it and feed it to the child, he'll be able to recover and be healthy again. And the king was willing to pay any price for anyone who could find this jewel in order to save his son's life. And wouldn't you know it, there was a, a person that found the jewel and they crushed it, they fed it to him and he felt better and he, he regained his, uh, his health and his strength and he came back to it. That's the mashal. The nimshal is that Akadosh Baruch Hu also knew that there was going to be a sick generation, which is the generation that we are in. A generation that is almost dying. And in order for it to die, I'm sorry, in order for it to live, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, there's a special Torah for this time. There's a special type of learning for that generation. And what is it? It's the Hasidut. The Hasidut is the crown jewel in God's crown. And God was willing to take out that, that big jewel on His crown and crush it into pieces in order to feed us the Tanya, the Hasidud, little by little, so we can regain our health, so we can regain our consciousness, so we can get, gain back our strength. In other words, the Hasidut is the Torah of the time of Ikvita de Mashiach, the time that we're in right now. In order to survive this time, you must connect yourself to Hasidut. Why? It's the Torah of Ikveta de Mashiach. It's the one that's going to help you survive this rough time that we're going through. And just like the dying son of the king had to be spoon-fed little by little in order to regain his strength, Mamash, we were feeling that, Be'emet, with Rav Yoram. His book, Betzur Yarom, was so easy to read, so easy to learn, so easy to give over. He's the chef, I'm the waiter. The rabbi cooked it and I was serving it for the past uh, 16, 17 weeks, but he made it so practical. He simplified it to the point that, was, that he took very high, lofty Torah, Kabbalistic concepts, Hasidut concepts, 
and he brought it down to us into a level that we can understand. And we really, really walked away with a tremendous amount of understanding of how things work behind the scenes. Having said that, having completed all 12 chapters of Yigeret HaTeshuvah, we're going to embark on a full review, a journey of the entire process of understanding the Teshuvah process through the lens of Balatanya. We walked in knowing it on an elementary level. And even after doing Teshuvah for many, many years, maybe even for many, many decades, and you might have known the way of the Rambam, and you might have known the, you know, the, 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 the Teshuvah Mi'ava and Teshuvah Mi'ira, but the mechanics, we didn't know. The behind the scenes, we didn't know. And this is what Baalatanya did. He revealed to us, he removed the curtain, and we got to see how things work behind the scenes in the Shemaim. And we got a completely different outlook, an upgraded outlook on how Teshuvah works. And also caused us to interact differently with ourselves and with others and with the world because we see things through a different lens. In order to fully understand Igeta Teshuvah or Teshuvah, we have to start from the beginning. So let's get started. Be'ezat Hashem na'asev v'natzliyah. Balatanya begins, and of course I'm going to be paraphrasing most of this class because uh, I don't want to go into the text. It was a text-based learning the entire time we we're just reading from the book and now that we're doing a review I, I i took my time to make very proper notes so we don't have to go into the text but this will give us the broad strokes with everything that we need to understand of how we got here okay let's get started Balatanya, Rabbi Shnur Zalma Miladi. as the author of the tanya and and thank you, Hashem, for Harav Israel Abrejel Shlita, who encouraged us to start this learning. And thank you, Hashem, for Rav Yora Michael Abrejel Zechet Sadiq Libracha, that made the effort, that made the effort to make this commentary on it, that simplified everything for us. I just want to say thank you, Hashem, thank you, Hashem, that we were able to mamaj understand, learn, and, 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 uh, and um, sort of um, internalize this learning that was really life-changing. Uh, definitely that our outlooks changed. Many people have approached me and said this is their favorite learning of the week it was because it was so intense and so intricate and so detailed. Uh, Bezat Hashem will try, will try to come back to Tanya maybe sometime next year and tried to do the entire Tanya with But for right now, let's get started. Baal Tanya says, there, when you come to do Teshuvah, you sinned, you did something wrong, it's time to come back. It's time to do the right thing in the eyes of God. There, there's a dual pathway. There's Teshuvah del Ela and Teshuvah del Tata. Teshuvah del Tata is the lower level Teshuvah. Teshuvah del Ela is the higher level of Teshuvah. What's the difference? Teshuvah del Ela is the higher level of Teshuvah where, you are, where your focus is on giving back your neshama to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the same way that He gave it to you, in the bare minimum, or on a higher level if possible. However, in order to reach this level of giving back your neshama to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the way that you received it, you have to go first through Teshuvah Del Tata, which is a lower level Teshuvah process. And that low level Teshuvah process is the, 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 the beginning of the road. It's the pathway to Teshuvah Del Ela, meaning to get to the highest level of Teshuvah process, you have to go through the Teshuvah Del Tata. You cannot skip a step. What is Teshuvah Del Tata? Well, in order to get to the higher level of Teshuvah, one must start first to familiarize themselves with the 248 positive commandments and 365 negative commandments. And how do you familiarize yourself with it? So according to Balatanya, and why do you want to familiarize yourself with it? Because should you transgress, should you do a sin, and you need to come back, each mitzvah has a different recipe, has a different 
a prescription on how to fix it. So in order to know how to fix what you ruined, first you need to know what those mitzvot are and how you're able to rectify. So when we start with the 245 mitzvot, 248 mitzvot asin, the, the positive commandments, according to Baal Atanya, if you transgress on a positive commandment, all you have to do is teshuva peshuta, which is a simple return, a simple uh, 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 rectification, which is lo chozer al If you take upon yourself to not sin on that, not to repeat that sin, according to Balatanya, you did teshuva. Check. For example. A person ate non-kosher. He says, I'm sorry, I take upon myself not to eat non-kosher again. According to Balatanya, you just did teshuvah. Any sin? Any We'll get, right, we talk about, right, right, we talk about positive. Positive commandments, right? So, 248, it's what I say. What is the process to repent, uh, to rectify when you transgress on a positive commandment? According to Balatanya, just do a teshuvah peshuta, lo chazer al Rambam has a different opinion. The classic formula to repentance that we all know is that what? Modev ve'ozev, Yerucham. First you admit, then you do a, a vidui, where you, uh, you you repent on it, then you have a charata, which is that you are... Um, charata is that you are... Uh, what's the English word for charata? Regret. That regret. regret. So first you admit, then you repent, then you regret, and then Kabbalah la'atid, and then you take upon yourself to never repeat it again, and and then you add to it an additional clause, an additional uh, add-on. Mitzvot ma'asim tovim. I used to sin. Now I'm concerned with just doing mitzvot and acts of kindness. So that is how you rectify when you transgress on 248. Positive commandments. Now, when you get to mitzvot lotase, when you get to the mitzvot of the negative commandments, it's a different process. As Masechet Yoma, the Gemara brings to us, that when a person transgresses on 365 of the negative commandments, he has to do two things. Certain ones are he needs to do teshuvah and Yom Kippur has to atone. Meaning he has to do a proper teshuvah process and the day of atonement has to pass over him. Because the day itself atones for a person's sins. That's how important it is that Yom Kippur, when it says the day of atonement, you know, it, it, it's as advertised. It's the day of atonement. That when the time comes that you just, that day passes, Hashem does what He does in the Shaman after judging you and there is a, a kaparat avonot. So when a person transgresses and mitzvot lotase, he needs to do teshuvah, and he has to wait for Yom Kippur to pass over him. There are other uh, mitzvot lotase that that's not enough. That you need to do more. That you need to do teshuvah. Yom Kippur needs to go over you, and you have to deal with afflictions, kisurim. And then there's a third process, which is a person must when he, when they transgress and lotase. You have to do Teshuvah. Yom Kippur has to go over you. You have to deal with afflictions in order to rectify for the sins. And, and, and also get to your deathbed. That only mita mechaperet. So now, great. Wh which is which? Which one is just Teshuvah and Yom Kippur? Which one is Teshuvah, Yom Kippur and afflictions? And which one is Teshuvah, Yom Kippur, afflictions and only the deathbed atones? So that's the whole process of Teshuvah del Tata. Familiarize yourself with the mitzvah and the punishment, or I'm sorry, not the punishment, the rectification process that's necessary to atone. That takes time. Since there's 248 and 365, that means it's gonna take you some time before you figure out what happens if I don't eat kosher? What happens if I don't keep Shabbat chas v'shalom? What happens if I steal? What happens if I lie? What, what happens? How do I rectify? Is it all just aviti uh, chatati pashati and it's over? The answer is no. The answer is no. There's more. 
if it's under the category of mitzvot ase, according to Baratanya, yeah, just leave it behind and you're done. You want to add the whole formula of the Rambam? You could as well. But when you get into the category of lo ta'ase, it gets a little complicated. How do I rectify for what I did? So in order to understand your rectification process, your teshuvah process, you must familiarize yourself with the mitzvot ase and lo ta'ase, and what is the prescription to atone for your sin? The rabbi said that could take a lifetime. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. But that's what it is. That's your job. Get to know the owner's manual. You live in this world. You're walking around. You don't know how to fix what you've uh, broken. Like imagine you go to, uh, you know, I don't want to give like, any wrong examples, but you can't go through life just breaking things. When the time comes to fix things, you have to know how to fix also. It's easy to break. It's easy to sin. Right? But how do you fix it? Part of, part of uh, being a good Jew, a connected Jew, uh, somebody who understands, uh, you know, wants to have a relationship with God, is when God gave you 613 ways to connect to Him, don't just uh, connect with Shabbat, you know, Shabbat for the Kiddush Club, uh, uh, Shavuot for the Cheesecake, uh, Friday nights for, uh, for Chabad, don't pick and choose the things of how to connect. Hashem says there's 613. Get to know the 613 ways to connect to me. Each one has its own power. And God forbid you, you transgress. Also find out how to make things right. And why is this important? Because the mitzvot are 613 USB cables. 613 cables from here that connect to us and connect to Kisat Kavod and the It's how we connect to God. If you have only 613 ways to connect to God and you're not being connected, how are you going to have a relationship? How are you going to have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, life, uh, the, the, the life source that you need, the, the, where all your hayut comes from, having disconnected? It's like, it's like taking a radio, pressing power when you're not connected to the power cord. How do you expect it to play? You're not connected. Same thing. How do you expect things to happen to you in your life if you're not connected? Start connecting one cable at a time, one by one, and eventually you see you'll be connected to the source. Things will happen. Things will turn on. Things will eventually uh, work in your favor because you're connected to the source of life. You're connected to Hashem. You're connected to Barakot. You're connected to the Torah. But if you're not connected, that's why you, people feel like, why aren't things happening? Well, uh, talk to me about your Judaism. Talk to me about your Yiddish guy. Talk to me. What do you do? What, how's your everyday life? How do you wake up? Do you talk to Hashem? Do you pray? Do you learn? Do you, do you, do you acquire knowledge about yourself, your heritage, your, your religion? Where are you holding? Ayeka, as it says in, the, in, in Bereshit. When my Kadosh Baruch Hu was asking... When my Kadosh Baruch Hu was asking Adam Arishon, Ayeka... Where are you? That's a question he asks every person in the world. Where are you? Hashem says ayeka to every single human being. Where are you holding? And you have to ask yourself, because if you're not checking yourself on a regular basis, you can go through life thinking you're a good guy, you do great. I don't kill, I don't kill mosquitoes, I walk all days across the street, I give tzedakah, I give three coins every, every morning. Oh, great, we're not gonna take that away from you. But there's a lot more, there's a lot more depth to the Torah. So that's why you have to familiarize yourself with the 240 and 365 that should you transgress, how do you turn, how do you repent? How do you bring it back? Continues to say that one of the ways that we could rectify, one of the ways of repentance, one of the ways that can help a person atone for their sins is fast. Refraining from eating food. And, and the ta'anit served the purpose. The ta'aniyot lechaper alachet kmo korban ola. That as a matter of fact, that when a person fasts, it has the same efficacy as somebody bringing korban ola in Bet HaMikdash. And we know that the, the, the efficacy of bringing a korban ola in Bet HaMikdash is it brought a person to a status to bring him to a status in the eyes of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, of being the same way he was before he sinned. So for example, a person sins, 
it'd be great if you could just erase the sin and Hashem would look at you like He never did it. Is that an option? Is it possible? The answer is yes. With a proper teshuvah process, and then time Bet Hamikdash, a person would bring in Olah, it would bring him back to a status as if he was, as if he didn't sin at all. Since we don't have uh, Bet Hamikdash nowadays, what can we do? We don't have uh, animal sacrifices. So what can we do to achieve the same thing as Korban Olah? So we said, and Korbanot, and Bet Hamikdash. We don't have sacrifices in the Bet Hamikdash. So what replaces it today? So very similar to the way that you would take the Korban Olam and you would sacrifice it on the altar, and that would mean that the fats and the blood would be burnt on the altar. So just Moshe Chelev Vedam al Nizbach Mechaprim. Just like the fats and the bloods of the animal would atone for a person's sin, similarly is the effect of a person when he fasts. Why? What happened when you fast? Your blood and your fat, same way, the same way that your blood and your fats diminish when you're fasting, similarly is the effect of a korban olanda mizbeah. So this is a great item. If we want to bring back ourselves to the point of before the sin, and we want to bring a Korban Ola, since we don't have Bet HaMikdash, what should you do? Fast. Because the same way that the fats and the blood uh, were burnt on the altar, the, your fats and your bloods are being diminished, it has the same efficacy. Korban Ola, fasting, same thing. However, Baal Atanya says, We're a weak generation. We're a weak generation that it's not possible for us to go through this whole fasting process. As, as Rav Yora Michael Abedjez, Zechen Tzadik Yibrecha, gave us the whole uh, uh, sampling of the menu of, uh, of the Ariza that says that when somebody doesn't keep Shabbat, Bishgaga, the 40, if somebody doesn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 he has to, uh, if he has Kaas, Kaas is 150, uh, 151 fast. So he says, how can a person, uh, you know, how can a person fast a hundred times? How can a person fast 50 times? We're a weak generation. We're not going to be able to withstand refraining from eating food. Not only that, we said that the problem with fasting is, is that the whole process of fasting as a substitute to Korban Olam, is to, in order to, uh, to go through a transformative experience of a Teshuvah process with Kadosh Baruch Hu. Unfortunately, when people fast today, what do they say? What are they worried about? Oh my God, let me go take a nap for six hours so this fast can finish. Oh, what is that? Is that chicken that I'm smelling? I'm starving. Oh my God, I can't believe everybody's having coffee. I can't start my day without coffee. Meaning, it looks like everyone has all day. It became a dietary exercise more than spiritual transformation. People are fasting more in re and paying attention more to how their body feels or how their head feels or or whatever food they're craving. You miss the boat. The reason why you're fasting is you're diminishing the fats and the bloods in your body. Plus, do your teshuvah. Hashem, I'm sorry. How did I sin? How did I go to that store? How did I buy that slice of pizza that's not kosher? How did I drive on Shabbat? How did I use iPhone on, on the Hagim? How did I do it? How did I do it? You sit there and you go through the, through the teshuvah process. But if all you're concerned about is, you know, counting down the minutes to your first bite into a steak at the end of a fast, you missed the, you missed the point. So Baal Tanya says, Dor Chalash. You're not going, it's not going to work out for you. So what should you do? So he gave us a few options. One, substitute the cost of a meal and give it as a tzedakah. Meaning, if you're supposed to have 151 fasts for getting angry, the menu that the Arizal gave us, so take the value of a meal today, which what I say, you know, maybe you might be find a, some, you know, some uh, restaurant in the suburbs that will give you a falafel for ten dollars, but nowadays a meal is twenty bucks. Anywhere you go, it's twenty bucks. So you would take one fifty-one times twenty dollars, and there it is. 
$3,000 for getting angry one time. That's kaparat avonot, if you could imagine. So one of the th- one of the ways of doing it is if you want to bring a korban ola, if you want to fast, but you can't, because your mind is going to be all day long or, or, or thinking about food, then give the, the 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 monetary equivalent of a meal and say this is tumurat my uh, my uh, my fast my taanit, and then you continue to learn and you teshuvah process while you still have your faculties together, while you're settled in your mind, because you're, you're not dealing with hunger pangs or weaknesses, so on and so forth. So one of the things is that you can substitute it with money. The second thing was, it's better that you eat and, with, and bless before and after with kavana, with kedusha, rather than to fast. Meaning, instead of refraining from eating in order to atone for the sin, when you eat, bless with kavana. Stop for more than three seconds to say shakun yabit baro. Cut the bracha in three. Baruch atah Hashem. Elokeinu melech haolam. Shakun yabit baro. Start to internalize the words. Start to make a bracha with kavana. The bracha chrona. Say it also, slowly, understand what you're saying. Eating. Eat just what you need. Don't overeat. Eat things that are healthy, not the things that are not healthy. By eating, by kedusha, betahara, blessing before and after properly, is better than what? Than fasting. So we have eating by kedusha, betahara, substituting tzedakah for the for the fasting meals, and by then, by that, you're able to still take advantage of korban ola in our days. Because that's what we want to do. We want to bring ourselves to uh, getting the status in God's eyes of going back to before the sin. Once we understood that, Balatanya took us on a detour. Balatanya took us on a detour in order to understand why we need to go through a rectification process as such. And he gave us an insight on the makeup of the human soul. Uh, the makeup of the soul compared to the soul of the Gentiles, compared to the souls of animals, and even compared to the to the angels. And here we started a, a little bit of a deeper understanding of how man was made. So and especially the soul of the the souls of the Jewish people. Balatanya shared with us The entire world was created with the 22 letters of the alphabet and with God's name of Elohim. We know that God has many names. Each name has a certain character, a certain attribute. The entire world got created with, the, with God's name Elohim and with the 22 letters of the alphabet. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim v'etaritz. So we see God use the word Elo, the name of Elohim to create the world with the twenty-two letters of the alphabet and the name Elohim, which is the creation of everything that is external. The Jew is, or Adam, or let's just say the uh, uh, the last creation, the one that was supposed to. You know, Hashem created the whole world through six days and everything that's in it. And then He created, the last creation was Adam. And we said, what is Adam? So Balatanya revealed to us by way of uh, the Navi Yechizkel that Adam is a Jew. Meaning what? Atem kiruin Adam ve'en ovde kochavim kiruin Adam. As it was brought in the Gemara. That when you see the word Adam, that we are, the Jews are considered Adam, not the idol worshippers are considered Adam. And because we are considered Adam, Adam got created, and the, because we are considered Adam, and the Jew is what they're referring to, Hashem created us differently. Pay attention. The entire world, the entire world was created, the external, everything was created, with, you, with God's name of Elohim and the 22 letters of the alphabet. How was man created? How was Adam created? Adam was created with God's name of Yudke Uvavke 
and with a nefiha. He blew air into Adam, which is unique. No other creation in the world had that creation process. It says that that he blew air into the form of the of the human being of Adam, and he made him alive. And as it says in the Gemara, and that it was brought by way of the Zohar, Where did Hashem blow the air from? From Himself. So just like the air that Hashem blew was inside of Him, and He blew it inside the human being, inside Adam, Meaning what? That the internal part of God created Adam. So let's just get to this uh, level set understanding. The entire world was created by God's name Elohim, 22 letters and everything is external. Adam, the Jew, got created with Yudke Vavke and with the internal side of God, the breath of God that went into the human being, into Adam, and that's where we're coming, where we're made from. So we're made from the Pnimiyut, from the uh, Pnimiyut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the, uh, the rest of the world is made from the Hitzoniyut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, that means that we get our life source from somewhere else. Adam mekabelet chayuto mishem Hashem yud kevavke meor enso. So now, we have to like imagine that we are here in the lowest place possible, which is Olam Asiya, and there's all these four worlds on top of us, and they lead up to a place in the heaven called Or, or Enso. And above Or Enso, over there is Yudke Vavke, and that's where Hashem resides, God's uh, throne of glory. And from those high heavens, from God's throne of glory, comes a string that comes all the way to us and becomes our lifeline. That what we can, Shaddam Mekabet Chayuto, that we get our life force from where? From God's name, Yudke Vavke, from the Or and Sof. That's what we get. That's what we get plugged into. Meaning, if there was a plug that in the wall that gives us power, its source would be all the way in the high heavens, in a place where God's name Yud Kevavke resides, as well as a place in the heaven called Or and Sof. However, what happens to the Jew that sins? What happens to a person that now? starts to pull out these cables, starts to pull out these 613 USBs that we're talking about, and he starts to get disconnected, how do they stay alive? If you go in the way of God, you get your life force from, your life source from, you came back from, or and so, that's when you're in the way of God. When you're not in the way of God, what happens? You're disconnected. So how do you stay alive? So it says, Kshelo adam Hashem, Mekabel Chayuto Misitra Achra. He gets his life source from the dark side, from the other side. So once you realize, and we spoke about Noga, we spoke about the pipes. I don't want to include it over here, but I'll, I will give it 30 seconds and move on. We said that what happens when you're transgressing mitzvot aseh, mitzvot lot aseh. So we said it's all pipelines with all the shefa coming down. So as you're sitting, you're, 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 you're punching holes into those pipelines. You take a knife and you punch in a hole. So anybody who has a, ever had a plumbing issue in the house, you see what happens when there's one burst in the pipe. What happens? There's no pressure in the toilet, the shower, head, the, the water doesn't come down. What happens? The, the water doesn't run the same way. All of a sudden there's flooding, right? Imagine if there's a hundred holes. You open up the water. What comes out the, at the end of the faucet? Maybe a drop. Two, three, everything's coming out in the pipe, in the in the walls and in the ground. Similarly, the damage we do when we sin. And not only that, because we are, uh, so so since there's no Shefa coming down, so how are we living? How does a person live if he's not connected to the source of life? God's name of Yudke Vavke, etc., etc. Well, you get, a uh, person gets his life from, uh, from the Sitra Acha, from the dark side. Now... How do you come back? Okay, the person is now on the other side. He's on the wrong side of the highway. How does he make a U-turn? He says, in order to come back to the true source of life, to get reconnected to Yudke Vavke and Or Ensov, you have to awaken up God's mercy. 
So how do you waken up God's mercy? You have to waken up the 13 attributes of mercy. Yag midot rachamim. You have to awaken this place in the heavens that is called Yag Midot Rachamim. That we found out it's even on a higher level of Yud Kei Vav Kei. God's mercy is above that high level that we were just discussing. And from there, if we reach that area in the heavens, we're able to awaken God's mercy. And by awakening, awakening God's mercy, we're able to start our path back to getting connected to the source of life, Yudke Vapke, from Or and Sof. So how do we do it? How do we awaken God's mercy? The person is sinning. The person went off the derech. The person is disconnected. The person is getting his life force. He's getting his, his, his hayut from Sitra Akra. How do you wake up God's mercy? Two ways. I'm well, sorry. One way that the Rav told us, Tikkun Chatzot. Tikkun Chatzot, that prayer that a person says at halachic midnight, which for example here in Miami is around 1.20 in the morning, and it ends at the, uh, at the crack of dawn, which is roughly uh, around 5.30, 5.45 nowadays. So what's this Tikkun Chatzot? Tikkun Chatzot is uh, uh, several chapters of Tehillim, where we cry for the destruction of the temple, that Jerusalem is not built out, that we're not li- that we don't have uh, that the Shekhinah is homeless, that the Shekhinah is not uh, uh, residing in Bet Hamikdash, it doesn't have a home, Kivyachol. So we we lament the fact that we don't have a built out Jerusalem, a Bet Hamikdash. We don't have uh, the, the Shekhinah is not a place to reside. So we cry. We we wake up in the middle of the night to cry for those things. Or to, to bang on our chest to say it's because of our sins that we don't have a built out Beta Mikdash. And that is the beginning of waking up the mercy of Akadosh Baruch Hu. When you wake up in the middle of the night and do Tikkun Hatzot. And since there is a late part and an early part, you could stay up till 1.30 in the morning and do it. Or you could wake up early at 5 o'clock in the morning and catch the end of it. Those places too have a significance because when you start to pray, in the, in the beginning of Hatzot, it's an auspicious time to pray for the Jewish people. When you wake up early in the morning, or if you stay up, it's good to pray for yourself personally. So meaning, in the beginning of the night, it's good to pray for Ami said. At the end of the night, it's good to pray for yourself. Of course, you pray for Israel as well, but there's, it's better that you pray for Ami said in the beginning of the night, and for yourself at the end. Why is this important? Because when you start to show God that what? I care. I care that you don't have a home. I care that you're in the diaspora. I care that the Galut is now suffering because of the sins of his children. Because that's what it is. When we're in the ways of Hashem, when we're going in the ways of Hashem, He has Bet HaMikdash, the the, the Shekhinah resides in in, in Kodesh HaKodeshim. And, and there's, a, there's a genuine connection between the Creator and His children. But when there's no built out Bet HaMikdash, when 80% or 70% of God's children are not going in the ways, every sin that, that 80% makes hurts the Father's heart. Every sin hurts HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Every sin makes Hashem, uh, makes the, the Shekhinah sad. It makes it uh, it, it, like as if it's uh, forsaken and laying in the dirt. That's what we say. <laughs> the Shekhinah, where is it? It's residing on the dirt. God's holy presence in the dirt. That's what it feels like when your children are not going in your way. So what ha- what's happening over here? You wake up in the middle of the night and say, Shem, I feel your pain. I understand what you're going through. I am praying that this should not be a reality. I'm praying for Bet HaMikdash to be built out. I'm praying for the Jewish people to go in your way. I'm praying for the Shekhinah to have Dira Batachtonim. That's what Tikkun Chatzot is all about. And while you're there, while Hashem says, Oh, you care for me? You care for what's wrong with me? Tell me your problems. And that's the also Hashem Abba. I'm here in the middle of the night. I made, a, I made a date with you to let you know I'm struggling with the Parnassah. I'm struggling with my Shlom Bayit. My children are not listening. I need a Shidduch for my son. I need a Sata Deshmaya in this part, in, in this, uh, in this business, in this, uh, in this deal. I need to be happy. I need to be, be better with my learning. I need to be better with my prayer. 
What? Spill your heart out. That's the right time. That's when Hashem says, this is an auspicious time to, to also uh, not only pray for yourself, mm -hmm. but imagine, Hashem, look at us. Look at us as a nation. Look what the whole world is turning on us. Look at the look at October seventh. Look at the uh, look at the hostages. Look at the division on Misa. Pray, pray. Show that you care. Don't just wake up in the morning and say, "Where's my Fruit Loops and my milk?" All you care about is your food, or you don't care about your breakfast. Nobody's Fruit Loops anymore. I'm just saying. You, you, where are you, Ayeka? Where are you holding? Are you connected? Do you wake up in the middle of the night to talk to God? If you do, then then Hashem says, "Okay, you see me, I see you." You see what's wrong? You, 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 you care for my welfare. Kivyapol, God. We care for His welfare. He says, I care for you as well. Hashem is a mirror. He mirrors our interaction with Him. So, so Balatanya says, wake up and do tikkun chatzot in the middle of the night. What is that going to yield? Awaken God's mercy for you. To do what? To say, come back, come back. No more getting life from Sitra Acha. And come come get, get plugged back to Yud Kevavke. Like I said, Balatanya removed the curtain and showed us how, how things work behind the scenes. I don't know if you guys ever heard this type of Torah. I have never in my life saw, heard any, anything like this. I guess, you know, you know, this is what they do in yeshivas when they sit all day long and learn. They, this is what they do. Sharon, can I ask a question? Yes. It depends on the, on the time, that the time zone where you live, or it's just in general? Wherever you are in the world. Yeah? Wherever you are in the world. Wherever you are in the world, mid, uh, halachic midnight to the morning is considered the time for Dikun Chatzot. So, and we said, now that you're waking up God's mercy, one that there, now that you have God's rachamim awakening, and you got God's attention, and you're telling him, Hashem, I'm here in the middle of the night to tell you I am sorry. I am sorry for what I did. I want to come back. So he's going to tell you, okay, in order to come back, you have to do Teshuvah, Delela, but Teshuvah Delela can only proceed, uh, only come after you do Teshuvah Del Tata. So the Teshuvah Del Tata has a dual pathway as well. When you start your journey back to Kadosh Baruch because you can't go right away to the high level. We'll get to it. First, you got to go to Teshuvah Del Tata, which we just said previously was what familiarize yourself with the mitzvot. I say, but look, I say, what's the proper rectification process for each one? But let's just say we passed that stage. Let's just say you already know. You saw Shabbat, you did something wrong on Shabbat, you did something wrong on Kashrut, you looked it up and you say, okay, here is the proper rectification process, you did it. Now, what's the approach? What's the approach for the Teshuvah del Tata? So there's a dual pathway here as well. Teshuvah mi'ir'ah, Teshuvah me'ava. Your pathway to God on the, uh, on the lower level of Teshuvah starts with uh, Teshuvah out of fear, Teshuvah out of love. What is the difference from coming back to God out of fear as opposed to coming back to God out of love? So, beautiful definition because we always try to use our, uh, you know, our uh, understanding of our pretext of understanding of, of, of what coming to God, coming back to God out of fear means and what coming back to God out of, um, out of love is. But Baal Atanya and Narev Yoram, Baruch Hashem, gave us a beautiful insight to it. It said, Teshuvah Mi'ra'ah. Teshuvah process out of fear is just 50% of the job. Why? Because when a person does teshuvah process out of fear, is because he's still very much connected to himself. He's still just concerned about himself more than, more than he's concerned about God or his relationship with God. Why? Because a person will do teshuvah mira, a person will do a teshuvah process out of fear because he's scared. Scared from what? Scared from getting sick. Scared from losing money. Scared for his family. Scared for his children. Scared for his parnasah, scared for all these things. So he says, Hashem, I don't want to lose anything in this world. I don't, I don't want to lose any blessings. I don't want to get punished. Out of fear, I'm coming back. Because he, he, he's scared of not himself. In complete contrast, is Teshuvah Me'ava. What is Teshuvah out of love? That Teshuvah out of love is when a person is concerned about his relationship with Hashem more than anything else. 
Meaning the number one thing in the person's life is not to lose their connection with God. And because that's their driving force, that's what they're connected to, that's what's driving them in their teshuvah process, they're concerned about their relationship with God more than how the teshuvah process is going to affect his, their family. That's why a person who does teshuvah me'ava, it doesn't matter for him, his environment, the people that are around him, even what his family tells him, even the way people uh, interact with him or look at him, he is only concerned rak lo la'asot ra Hashem. Teshuvah me'ava is when your main concern is not to do anything wrong in the eyes of God and not to do anything wrong to jeopardize a close relationship with God. When that is your driving force, that is Teshuvah Me'ava. When you're doing Teshuvah because you don't want to get sick, you don't want to lose money, you don't want your family to get hurt, you want your kids to be protected, it's Teshuvah Me'ira. Nevertheless, it's okay. It's okay. You can come through that door. You can open up that door to Teshuvah Me'ira. Eventually, it will lead you to Teshuvah Me'ava. But you have to understand what is the two, uh, uh, the, the two pathways. And you could just stop right here and say, okay, when I do, when I do Teshuvah, why do I do it? Because I'm scared of God's punishment? Or, am I, or is it because I just don't want to lose my closeness with God? So right there you could understand, where are you in the journey? Are you on high level, entry level, pro level, mediocre level, intermediary level? Where are you in your relationship with God? This exposes you. This shows you where you're, where you're coming from when you're coming back. Is it because you want to make sure that Hashem gives you parnasa? You want to make sure that Hashem keeps you healthy? Is it because you want your son to get married? Is it because you're looking to have children? What's your driving force for your teshuvah process? If that's that, then know that it is teshuvah, mir'ah, and it's okay. It's okay. That's also a pathway to come back. However, if you're, the only reason why you're doing teshuvah is because you were so close to God and you're so disappointed that now you create a distance. Why? If you're here, I'll just throw in the what we said about those few words. What's an avera? Avar Hashem. You passed over the word of God. What is teshuva? Tashuv Hashem. Right? We said we come back to Kadosh Baruch Hu. What, 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 when you do avera, back in the days when there used to be the Bet HaMikdash, we would have to be what? A korban. Korban comes from the word kiruv, to get closer. So what happened? Avera makes you far away from God. You bring a korban le karev. That since we have korbanot, we do teshuva, teshuva Hashem. So we see that when a person says, no, 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 I don't want to be far away from God. I want to be close back to God. You're coming from the place of teshuva me'ava. Now, the rabbi exp expounded on the teshuva del Ela, which we said the textbook definition of teshuva del Ela is when you are... Uh, when you are concerned, when you wake up every single day, when you are coming back, when you wake up in the morning and your main focus is, how am I giving back God the neshama that He gave me the exact same way that I got it? Clean, sinless. Or how do I wake up in the morning and give Hashem the neshama back better than what He gave it to me? That's the Shuvah del Elam. But over here, the Rav gave us a little bit more. It says, one of the characteristic traits, one of the ways that you can see that you're on the right path, that you're in Teshuvah del Ela mode, is when a person, Poel Hakol, Mitoch Lashem Shamayim. When a person's every action comes, that he's doing for the sake of heaven. I'm learning Torah, Lashem Shamayim. I'm helping my friend, Lashem Shamayim. I'm going, to, I'm going to do all the things that the Torah is uh, detailing for me. For the sake of heaven. Not so I people can look at me and say, Oh, what an amazing guy. Oh, what a tzaddik. Oh, he's so righteous. Oh, he's so giving. Oh, what a philanthropist. Oh, what a... He, he. Not for the title, not for the fame, but rather that every single thing that you do is L'Shem Shamayim. That's why a lot of times people, you'll see with something unbelievable, unbelievable, sometimes you see charities, right? And you see thousands of people Giving $18, $26, $1,000, $18,000, $100,000. You see a, the charity mm -hmm. and there's so many people giving. And then you go to see, well, who are these people? Anonymous, 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 anonymous. Why? 
It's Hashem Shemaim. Don't give me the credit. Don't say my name. I don't need people to know I gave eighteen dollars. I don't need people to know I gave a quarter million dollars. I don't need people to know I gave a hundred thousand dollars. Anonymous. My tzedakah is the Shem Shamayim. So that's also the Torah learning. Oh, what am I doing the Torah learning? Oh, let me learn Torah. So I get the certificate. I get the uh, I, I get the rabbinical ordin- uh, ordination. I'll get uh, you know I'll get to a nice community and I'll make three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year as a, as, a, as a good rabbi in a good community. That's uh, that's not a Shem Shamayim. I'm sorry, but I, 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 do the, I do the other part, right? I put my name actually because I want people to see my name. Those who know me will be embarrassed. They didn't put that to say, you see, I don't get it. Okay, it's a there, it's a Shkafa. Furthermore, we see over here that a person can also use the Torah. He says, what? People look at me and I walk into the room. Oh, ha ha, ha ha. Oh, look at this guy. He's so smart. Eh. Everything will be the Shem Shamaim. As a chacham, I'm just copying, pasting the words of the of, of, of the of the tzaddikim that came before. So when a person when a person has a service of Hashem that is the Shem Shamaim for the sake of heaven, you are now in Teshuvah del Ela mode. You're on the higher level. Another way, it's another spiritual barometer. It's another way of checking you to say, where are you holding? Ayeka, where are you holding? Show me where you are. How, how's your service to Hashem? How's your acts of Hashem? How's your learning to Hashem? Is everything coming from L'Shem Shamayim? You know what? You're already in that different category, that different group. This is why it's very, very important that you hear these concepts. You ask yourself these questions. You try to process your life through the learning so you can sort of like crystallize, put in focus. You know those SLR cameras? You press the button and everything comes into focus. That's what these questions are. Where am I holding? Do I learn like this? Do I act like this? Do I think like this? Now, if you're there, great. If you're not, at least you know that Hashem says, strive for it. Go for it. Go for Teshuvah del Tata. Do it out of fear. Do it out of lack of knowledge. But eventually work on yourself and get to that higher service of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. So it says that when a person... Uh, where, so in, in order to be successful in Teshuvah del Ela, when you get to this part... When you get to this high level part that you're ready to Shuvah del Ela, what's going to help you succeed? Learn Torah for the sake of heaven. L'shem Shamayim. Bleed Nagia, not for any ulter, uh, ulterior reason. Furthermore, so, so we will learn that the Shuvah del Ela, Torah learning, L'shem Shamayim, was a, was a nice catalyst. It helped it. And that's what Balatani was sharing with us, is that when you get to that level, make sure that the way you behave, act, interact, or even uh, uh, you know, carry yourself is in the way of L'Shem Shaman. Which again, we could just stop right now and do a, a hundred classes on how to live life for the sake of L'Shem Shaman, for the sake of heaven. But nevertheless, we have to know that this is something that is part of the prescription of Teshuvah del Elam. So... As we reach this concept of Teshuvah del Ela, this level of understanding of Teshuvah del Ela, we saw that Baal Atanya says, let me add some layers to your service of Hashem. Once you add this section of Teshuvah del Ela, where you wake up in the morning, and all you care about is how I'm going to give God back the Neshama, the way that He gave it to me, or even better, then let me tell you what you should do. First uh, tip, learn Torah for the sake of heavens. Then He gave us, well, f- first we said, do tikkun chatzot to awaken God's mercy. Once you did the proper teshuvah through tikkun chatzot with awakening God's mercy, make sure that now that you're in teshuvah, that do you teshuvah out of teshuvah mirah v'ma'ava. Oh, you got through mirah through fear. Great. Eventually, you'll graduate to teshuvah me'ava. Ah, once you're teshuvah me'ava, then you should add Torah learning for the sake of heaven. It's like this. Imagine we're on a highway. We started at we started you know the i-95 in florida and we our destination is new york right so how do you go so you go on i-95 it's okay teshuva del tata okay it's going to be 248 miles of teshuva uh, you know of, uh, of mitzvot ase and another 365 miles of te- mitzvot lot ase okay and eventually you go oh fine here's here's our first exit you take your first exit which is what Okay, Teshuvah Mi'ra, there's all these things that we're going to do. Ah, there's another exit. Now, Teshuvah Mi'ra, oh, that's another exit. Oh, Teshuvah Del Ela, we're here, we reached our destination. But wait, before we reach our destination, there's a few more turns. First, Teshuvah Del Ela, let's make another exit. Over here, 
uh, learning Torah for the sake of heaven. Keep, keep going. We're on a highway. There's another few exits that we need to take before we reach our final destination. But that's what it is. You see, it's a pathway. We go from here to little by little, little by little. We keep make, taking exits, taking exits, taking exits. Eventually, we'll reach our final destination. So when we get to Teshuvah del Ela, we said a person needs to act with everything is for the sake of heaven. His learning of Torah is for the sake of heaven. And then Baal Tanya said, also don't forget acts of kindness, milut chasadim, start that your actions will be also a reflection of your learning. Why? Because when a person starts to do acts of kindness, he starts to cling to God. Milut chasadim, acts of kindness, creates a closeness with God, which is called vekut, clinging to God. You become very, very close to God. And the second tells us how, uh, how close we get. What is this clinging to God? Vikud Bakadosh Baruch Hu? Because you start to emulate God, which is, that's our purpose in this world, right? Our whole purpose is to emulate God in this world. Mahu Rachum, Afatah Rachum. Mahu Hanun, Afatah Hanun. We're told, God is merciful, you should be merciful. God is, uh, is kind, you should be kind. Emulate the ways of God in the world. It's our whole purpose in this planet. That's why, that's why Hashem created us differently. Remember, the whole world, 22 letters, and the name Elohim. Us, Yudke Vavke, and the breath. We're the internal side of God. We have a different purpose in this world. What's our purpose in this world? To emulate God in the world. To show the world that the, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, a human being going in the ways of God, being a light unto the nation, showing them how we can be in the ways of God in human form. He is merciful, you are merciful. He is uh, kind, you are kind. To cling to God and to act like God. To be godly. The same way that God has uh, attributes or ways of carrying Himself in this world, similarly we have to be. And what are those ways? The Torah ways. 613, Hashem says, this is 613 ways of how I carry myself. Hashem keeps the Torah the way we keep the Torah. So He says, here, emulate me in this world. Here's the, here's the owner's manual. Is uh Maybe it's been uh, more than 30 days. I, usually I don't... I, I, I try not to repeat this joke because I recycle it so much. You know, the, the, the famous story with the taxi driver that he told me, do you read the Bible? What's the Bible? Basic information before leaving earth. So he says, this is it. Hashem gave us the basic information before leaving earth. Here you go. Take it. Learn it. Emulate me in this world. Show the world what it's like to be godly in human form. And by doing that, where all your actions are for the sake of heaven, that your Torah learning is for the sake of heaven, that your acts of kindness are, uh, are added to your service of Hashem, that you're clinging to God by acting like God, this is what activates this level of service of Hashem called Dvekut, clinging to God, in a way called Ruach Beruach, meaning breath in breath, unified like one breath. And remember what, what the, the, the example that was given to us, when two people kiss, it's like one breath, right? It says, that's dvekut, that you and HaKadosh Baruch Hu are like one breath. And how you get to this level that you and God are like one breath, this dvekut says that you're able to do everything, that you're able to emulate God, b'machshava, dibur, u'maaseh. That everything that you do, in your thoughts, in your speech, in your action, is emulating God. You are now in the Teshuvah del Ela zone. He gave us a few warnings, Balatanya gave us a few warnings about how not to ruin this clinging to God. He says, be careful from spilling seed. Be careful from Pgam Habrit. Anybody who sins with Pgam Habrit, destroys their relationship with God. Immediately, no connection. Back, sita acha. A person has to be extremely careful with protecting their breed. Men and women. You have to, because it creates a complete disconnect. Now, we said 
that this is so out of left field. Why is he discussing Pugama Breit when talking about Limud Torah? We were just like in heaven. We were just talking about Torah, acts of kindness, Ruach Beruach, one breath, unified in the ways of God, Dvekut, and all of a sudden, Pugama Breit. What's the connection? Why should he jump from one subject matter to another one? Why, they, why is he connecting the two? So he said, because a person's zera, a person's seed, comes from the brain. It comes from the place of Chochma and Bina. That's where the person's seeds come. And if you, uh, if you know, it comes all the way from the brain down the, down the spine and eventually reaches that region and, and that's when the when the when the when the uh, the, the couple has uh, marital relations then it, it, it culminates in that area but in reality where it stems from where it starts is the brain gamma brit happens where the zera comes from man bina so imu pagam sham so when a person spills seed where did he damage he damaged in khokhma in bina right so how do you rectify somebody who, who, uh, who did Pugam Abri? Yosif Alimudo Letaken. You know, what do you have to do? You have to add learning, because when you learn, what are you using? Chokhmah and Bina. You damage Chokhmah and Bina for the Torah learning, add Torah learning. You learn one page, learn two. You learn one hour, learn two hours. Add more things in order to rectify from Pugam Abri. So we see, then when you get to the Teshuvah del Elazon, you have to be very, very careful to do. That all your actions are for the sake of heaven, learning Torah for the sake of heaven, acts of kindness, emulating God, to have dvekut, and chesed ve'emet yichaper. If, if a person is now in this stage, and he is now in... Teshuvah del Ela and he sinned, Chesed ve'emet yuchaper. It said, Gimilut hasadim, Limut Torah yechupar. So when you got to Teshuvah del Ela and you sinned, Chesed ve'emet yuchaper. Your formula now is not Modev v'ozev yerucham. That was Teshuvah del Tata. When you get to Teshuvah del Ela, Chesed ve'emet yechupar. What's Chesed ve'emet? Chesed is Gimilut hasadim. Chesed is acts of kindness. When you go to Teshuvah del Ela, and you already sinned, then what you have to do? Acts of kindness. Emet, what's emet? To Moshe emet ve Torato? Emet. The Torah is emet. So chesed ve emet, acts of kindness, and Torah learning will rectify. So it's very interesting. When we started Teshuvah de Tata, we said Modem Ozebi Rucham and all the different steps over there. But when you graduate to the Teshuvah de Ela and a person sins, there's a reality that somebody sins, what's his rectification process? What's his prescription? Acts of kindness and learning Torah. Now, we're getting to the latter chapters of of, of, of Gerta Teshuva, and we said that Teshuvah del Ela, when you get to the higher level Teshuva, you're already in a state of Iddabkud Derucha Berucha. You get to this level where you and God are like one breath. You're, you're, you're linked together. And what is the best way to achieve that? And what is the best way to stay there? Ali Detefila, through prayer. And here, Baratanya is going to give us uh, some tips on how to connect to God through prayer. As, as a side note, we know that one of the biggest tools that we have as Jews is the power of speech. And one of the biggest uh, 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 weapons or tools or power tools that we have is the power of speech, which is also called tefillah, prayer, that we inherited from our patriarchs and our matriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, Sarah, Rifa, Chelea were incredible masters of prayer. Moshe Rabbeinu was an incredible master of prayer. David HaMelech, incredible master of prayer. All that is in our DNA. We have the power of prayer. And it's in our genes. And it's for us to activate it. Do not ignore this power tool. They say that uh, a person's success in this world is 90% tefillah, 10% ishtadlut. That's how powerful tefillah is. Nothing, as we learned in our tefillah class, nothing comes down without a tefillah that goes up. 
Where do we learn that from? Adam Rishon. Remember, Adam Rishon, the grass, the potential for grass was beneath the ground. When did the grass start to grow? Only when Adam Rishon prayed for rain. Once he prayed for rain and the rain came down, then he got which is well. But Hashem created, he created. But without the tefillah, nothing happens. So same thing over here, Balatani is coming to show us. Activate your power of tefillah. Know your power of tefillah. Don't just leave it. Rabbi Shimshin Pinkis has a famous uh, example. He says, don't be a guy that owns a Ferrari and drives it his whole life in first gear. Know your power. Know your power that you're able to uh, that you have to, you're able to do a tremendous amount with your speech and with your tefillah. Balatanya here on the 10th chapter says, when you get to Teshuvah del Ela and you're ready and clinging to God, de rucha be rucha, as if you're one breath, you're so connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, activate this power tool, tefillah. And specifically, tefillah in general, and specifically, kiyat shema be kavana. The, uh, the, the reciting of shema, with intention. Why? In order to say, Vahafta et Hashem elokecha bechol evavecha, uvchol nafshecha, uvchol meodecha, be'emet. Meaning, that you should get to the point in your life where you say Shema Yisrael and you say the Pasuk, Vahafta et Hashem elokecha, that you love God, your, uh, you, that you love God, bechol evavecha, with all your heart. With all your soul. Some say it's money. Some say it's with all the midot that Hashem deals with you. I love you, Hashem. It doesn't matter. When you can say that line and mean it, and say it, you're there. Because we say it's three, how many times we say it a day? Oh, okay, great. It's like me telling my wife, I love you, you're great, you're unbelievable. Okay, and I move on. What? That's not how you say that. My wife, you're the best. You're the greatest. Allow me to take my time to express my, my love, my appreciation. I, I, I'll give my life over to you. I'll spend my last dollar on you. Ooh, it's a little bit different. It, it's, it's completely different. It's completely different when you say I love you, you grace. Uh, I'll get you anything you want, right? When you take your time and you mean the words that you say. Similarly here, are you at the level that when you say Shema, when you say, V'ahavta et Hashem Elokecha v'cholevavecha v'chol nafshecha v'chol modecha and you mean it, you're there. And Baal Netanya says, that's how you get there. That's how you know you're in Teshuvah del Ela zone. When you are saying those words and you're living those words, not just from the lips out, but it's inside of you, you're real, you're genuine. And then, Balatanya gave us an incredible insight to prayer. Incredible. Mamash, anybody who's able to internalize this, this is something unbelievable. He gave us an Aitzat Tovah Letfilah, he gave us good advice for prayer. It says in the Gemara, En omdim litpalel el amikovid rosh. You don't enter tefillah uh, lightheaded, giddy, laughing. Uh, you know, you just uh, you just woke up, you, you rub your eyes, and already you're into feeling. No, COVID rosh. They say that the tzaddikim used to spend an hour before, an hour after. The, meaning what? They would take an hour to prepare just to pray, and after they pray, they take another hour just to review the prayer. Was it good? Wasn't it good? What was it? Who does that? Anybody who prays out of the Siddur of, uh, of, of Rabbi Yoram Mikhail Abedjel that, that was put together, was compiled by Rabbi Israel Abedjel Shlita, it's incredible. If you start the morning section right before Tefillah, it's an hour. It has over there the, the it has over there the, um, no, I'll tell you, after Birkot Shachar, it, it has the Pesukim, it has Tefillat HaMenorah, Lam Natsach, from the Ben Ishchai, it has special pesukim that the 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 Darya Kadosh used to say. Then there's Tikkun Nefesh. Then there's Moda Vigilu Adat. And then after that you have, uh, if you're doing Ptichat Eliyahu. After Ptichat Eliyahu you have Bakashot. Then you have Tfilat Harashash, Tfilat Ashla Kadosh. All these things that people say. And then all of a sudden you see you get through this. If you do it properly, there's an hour, and you're prepared because you spoke. If, if you read the words over here, you just take a not just to swallow it like it's uh, sunflower seeds. Talking about if you really sit there and understanding, there's your hour. I'm prepared. 
I, uh, when I come to the first, to the opening line of Shahid, which is... Is this for Baruch Hamar? No, no, this is before uh, Korbanot. Uh, when I, oh, when, before Korbanot, like Blum? Yeah, wow. an hour before. <coughs> and, and then and you get to the first thing, I'm prepared, I'm primed for this moment. So understand that when it says, and by the way, the end of the Sidur also, there's a whole thing over there. He has over there, uh, you know, I, I'm, going, I'm going to promote it. Yes, there's uh, the, the, the right after Shachrit. It has a special Pesukim that most uh, Sidurim have, but it also has Yed Yud Gimel Ikarim, the 13 uh, principles of the Jewish uh, faith. Okay. Then after that, Isa Zechiyot, the 10 things that you're supposed to remember, which we said, if you recall in our class, what's so important about them? The Mitzvot Aseh. Mitzvot Aseh draw a lot of spiritual abundance. So what happens? Right after Tefillah, 10 easy Mitzvot. I'm remembering 10 things. We have a Mitzvot to remember. Huh? No, Sephardic 10. So you have 10 things that you could remember, and every time you remember, you're drawing spiritual abundance from the heaven because you perform mitzvah taseh. How easy is that? You spend two minutes in the morning, and you're already depositing in the bank billions of dollars in the Shemaim. So we have Esos Hirot. After that, you have the special tefillah of the Hafez Haim, Shmirat Alashon. After that, you have Segula Letikun HaNefesh. After that, Bereshit Taman. After that, Bechod Achav Da'eru. After that, you have uh, Igeret Haramban. Yes, we'll get to it. Igeret Haramban. After that, Parashat Haman. After Parashat Haman, Tfilat Merbi Shmael Kohen Gadol. After that, you have Tfilat Eliyahu Navi Zachor Letov. After that, Perk Shira. After that, you have Tikkun Aklali. There's your hour. Wow. Do it. When's the last time you did that? It's in the Sidurim. It's the pages you skip on the way to... To the song, to the singing. <laughs> rabbi Yoram Michael Abigel is the way Rabbi Sal used to say. He used to have a sidur with a bunch of papers in it. Yeah. Like okay. the, he would just say, and so his son saw him. He says, well, "Why do you pray like this?" He said, eh, "This one is a special prayer, and this one you have to say over here. This one the Ben Ishai says, and over here Rabbi Nachman says, he says, give me everything.' Ten years it took him." He compiled it, Rabbi put Sal. it, Rabbi Sal wow. compiled it, he gave it to his father, he said, his father said, unbelievable, because what you have over here is everything is on the way of wow. the Ben Ishchai, but additions from the Lubavitcher Rabbi, and, uh, and Hasidut, Rabbi Nachman Breslev, yeah. and all these, uh, and all, uh, of course, all the, all the, the recommendations of the Tefillot throughout all the books is all written over here. So wow. when we say, it's possible nowadays. Back in the days, the rabbi used to do it uh, differently. But we have it over here before, and we have it after. Anybody who takes enough time, maybe three hours in the morning, to get connected to God, it's easy. You know why? Pray nets. Wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Do tikkun chatzot. Start your process. You get into nets. The best of we of the day. That you were the first one to say, thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Nets finishes at 6.30. Spend another hour over there. 7.30, 8 o'clock, you're like a champ. Your belly is filled with, uh, with tefillah. Three hours underneath your belt. You know how you start your day when you're doing that? You feel like you have a bulletproof armor on you. You go into the world. Who can touch you after tefillah like that? It's possible. He knows how to get anybody anytime. Baruch Hashem, but we also know how to play defense anytime. Hashem doesn't make him stronger than us. Hashem says, fight him, I give you the same strength. Yeah. You know, to answer your question, back then, in the days there was video games, right? Mm -hmm. In the video games, you could choose the same character. That's how you have to look at the same at the Yetzirah. You and him are the same character in the video game. Who wins? We have the same strength, we have the same power, we have the same uh, capabilities. It's how you use the moves, you know. Who knows how to use the joystick and the button better? So that... That is what you have to do. Hashem gives, he says he's just as powerful as you. Who is going to outsmart who? So if you're smart, you outsmart him. If you're not smart, you fall for him. But nevertheless, back to the commercial. Back to the Baal Atanya's Etzat Tova. He says, and he quotes the Gemara, and Omdim Nitpalet Elam Kovidosh. You have to have a settled mind. You have to have a chna, You have to be subdued before you enter tefillah. But then he says, but you know, there's somewhere else that says, 
There's another place that says, don't start your tefillah unless you're in a state of joy. So over here we have a contradiction. Is it Kovid Rosh or is it Simcha? And obviously those two things negate one another. Kovid Rosh and Simcha don't go one another. Kovid Rosh is seriosity. Simcha is your joy, happiness. And furthermore, he says that it's humanly impossible for most people. We're not talking about spiritual giants that are capable of doing this. But it's impossible for a person to go from Kovid Rosh to Simcha from one second to the next. You look at him like a schizophrenic. You think, look at him, this guy's crazy. One second he's like this, one second, ah. So what is this? So what? which path should we choose? Kovid Rosh or Simcha? Because now we're talking about the importance of Tefillah, which is another... Uh, uh, Adder to Tefillah del Ed to Shuvah del Ela. So he says, once again, he uses the, the the term of Dor Yatom. This is an orphan generation. It's not a strong generation. It's not a, a generation that's capable of being able to do both at the same time. To do Kovid Rosh and to do Simchat at the same time. To to pray with a with, with a subdued and with a settled mind and a Kovid Rosh. And to be in joy, in joy and happiness at the same time. So he says, then what you have to do is you have to do Teshuvah Tata'a and Teshuvah Ila'a. Meaning, inside your Teshuvah Ila'a, you have to include another subcategory. He says Teshuvah Tata'a, the lower level Teshuvah, when you're supposed to be serious and you're supposed to be subdued, do that during Tikkun Chatzot. Because that's the appropriate time for it. You're praying for Jerusalem. You're praying for the destruction of the temple. You're praying for God's uh, holy presence not not being in its proper place. You're praying for the Shekhinah and the sorrow of the Shekhinah, the status, the low level status of the Shekhinah nowadays. That's for that you need COVID Rosh. And over there also, insert your things that you're struggling with. In Tikkun Chatzot. Is what is chatzot? It's midnight. Halachic midnight, yeah. Okay. He says, once you did that in Tikkun Chatzot, you, you, you check the box. You did Teshuvah del Tata. Then you can continue to Teshuvah del Ela. Which one? The one that says, Mitoch Simcha. Right? He said, the Gemara tells us, you have to do Kovid Rosh. Kovid Rosh, Tikkun Chatzot. And the one of Simcha is when? That's Teshuvah Regila, which is what? That, that, that you, your, your teshuvah process comes out of joy of happiness when the entire day, the entire time, all the rest of the tefillah. Meaning, we're instructed to have two approaches to prayer. One is a heavy heart, sad, broken hearted, uh, subdued. And then the other one is to enter tefillah through joy and happiness. We can't do both at the same time. Okay? So Balatani says, exactly, so do this. Tikkun Chatzot, the appropriate emotion, feeling, approach, is a heavy mind, broken hearted. Do the Teshuvah, the, 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 the uh, Tefillah Mikovid Rosh at that time of the day, but only at that time of the day. Once you finish with Tikkun Chatzot, go back to Simcha. Pray your entire day, your entire prayers, the rest of the day, be in joy and happiness. In other words, there's a proper place to be sad, to be broken hearted, to be subdued, to be open to that emotion. It's in Tikkun Chatzot and Tikkun Chatzot only. Every other time, joy and happiness, which is an incredible way of now, uh, of time management, of managing your time. I can manage my emotions. I can take all the things that are connected to sadness, broken heart, things that I'm sorry for, which is the destruction of the temple, not having Mashiach, God's holy presence being in the exile, and plus my add-ons, what I'm struggling with. When's the time for that? Tikkun Chatzot. And the rest of the day, I'm a happy Jew. My prayers are with joy. My actions are with joy. My thoughts are with joy. Everything with joy and happiness. And you're being Mekayem, and on din nitpale la mikoved rosh, check, tikkun chatzot, and on din nitpale la mitoch simcha, the rest of the day. David Amelach says, Hebdu Tashem b'simcha. Hebdu Tashem b'simcha, that is also that, Hazak. So this is incredible, incredible way of understanding this. This is one of my biggest takeaways of this lesson, of this learning. One of the biggest takeaways of how it can compartmentalize 
my emotions and my prayer to be in a certain way at a certain time it's appropriate and the rest of the day it's forcing you not forcing you teaching you that the way of a Jew is to always be happy our secret our our our, our, our secret weapon or the thing that is actually that activates the Torah to its greatest capacity is when you're serving Shem out of Simcha. If do it Hashem, the Simcha. And then Hashem will have Simcha. You're going to accept the Tfilot. So we have Balatanya on the 11th chapter ask a very big question. He says, he says, how can a person be subdued in his heart and do teshuvah tata'a, the lower level teshuvah, and then you're telling me to also be happy, which is teshuvah dil'ela. How can you do both teshuvot at the same time? We were just under the impression that we're on a highway and we're driving and we keep taking exits and exits and exits and exits and exits to our destination. And eventually our final destination is Teshuvah del Ela. Chapter 11 is telling us, no, no, no. You actually have to take a different type of exit where you have Teshuvah del Ela and Teshuvah del Tata side by side. Huh? I thought it was a graduation. I, mean, I left that behind. I'm on a higher level. Express life. How do you now bring back the fact that we have to do Teshuvah del Tata and del Ela at the same time? Why? Because we said Teshuvah... Tata'a also was out of the, the emotion of sadness, broken heart, subdued to Kadosh Baruch Hu. Teshuvah Delela Simcha. We just said we can't be schizophrenics, we can't be all over the place with our emotions. We're Dor Yatom. So, how do we do that? Amazing question. He answers it. He says, Subduing the heart, that's something physical, that's something that's connected to the body. Simcha. Happiness, joy, that's connected to the neshama. So it's two different things, two different departments. This teshuvah del tata of the of achna'a, of kovid rosh, that has to do with your physicality. When it comes to simcha, simcha doesn't come from physicality. Simcha comes from spirituality. Simcha comes from the neshama. So now what do we have? Now, can we do them at the same time? Yes, because it's two different departments. Because what's our body made out of? Physical and spiritual. It's made out of the body and the neshama. The goof and the neshama. Ruchan yud gashmiu. Neshama elokit, neshama behemit. So, nefesh elokit, nefesh behemit. So what do we have over here? He's telling us you can use them together. They can work side by side. And as a, as a matter of fact, what's a successful Jew? One who's able to navigate life through his physical and spiritual. Our whole purpose in this world is to elevate the physical through the spiritual. So this part over here that Balatani is telling us that you can actually have Achna'at Alev and Simcha side by side because Achna'at Alev, the subduing of the heart, is connected to the physical and the joy and happiness that's connected to the Neshama. So it's two different departments in the same person and they can reside side by side, including in the Tefillah process, in Teshuvah Del Ela, that, that yields the clinging to God, the closest to God that we yearn for. So, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you feel bad for a sin and joy at the same time? Because remember, we're what are we what are we learning? Teshuvah, right? Everything though. What's the subject that we're talking about? Teshuvah. What's teshuvah? Rectification. I sinned, heavy heart, subdued. Teshuvah process. But he's asking me to be happy at the same time. So how do you do Teshuvah with joy? There's once again the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the split personality, the schizophrenia. How do, we, how do I pull off both of them? I understand that one is physical and I understand that one is spiritual, but in, 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 uh, uh, in real life action, how do you perform it? But if you get to the point that you feel bad for what you did, you already must be happy because you get to this point. Exactly. And you think about to because do something. Because we have a chance to make shuvah. This is that. No, but exactly. if you don't, if you don't care, you don't think about. If you Very get to good. the point, you have to. You guys continue. are there. You guys are there. Hazakim buchim. The chaim, the chaim, unbelievable. <laughs> We're there. That's Thank you, Rabbi Berger. <laughs> so he says, how can you achieve both of those things? 
these, these things that look like they're oil and water, that they don't match. Bitachon ve'emuna she'ashem islach lo b'li shum safek. When you have faith and trust that God will forgive you, no matter what, that's how you're able to have both those worlds coexist. Meaning, remember when he told us in the, in the, in the, in the Amidah, we have the Berachah that says, Slach lanu kipashanu. He says, when you say that word, Slach lanu kipashanu, forgive us Hashem because we have sinned, then that second, you have emunah bitachon that you're forgiven. Meaning, when you get to the level that you are just going into Amidah, and you say, Selach lanu avinu kichatanu, and you believe that Hashem has forgiven you, that's going to bring you a tremendous amount of happiness and joy. Kshiyomar b'shumat, miyad nimchal, Baal Atanya says, you should know that when you say those words, immediately you're forgiven. Bli chashash, lebrecha lebatala. He says also, with no uh, uh, fear, that you might have said God's name in vain. Why? So I'll just stop here and, and give it a little bit more depth. We're not allowed to say God's name in vain. When we say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Chanun HaBelisoah. I say, Baruch Atah Hashem, that you are uh, trustworthy and, and, and merciful, that you, that you have forgiven me. How can you say that? How do you know that God forgave you? If you don't believe that Hashem forgave you, that's Bracha Batala. So Balatanya says, maybe you shouldn't say this Bracha. Because you're not sure if God really forgive you. You can't say, Baruch Hashem, that you forgave me. If you don't, if Hashem didn't forgive you, that would be what? That would be a lie, or that would be something, that, uh, uh, saying God's name in vain. Baratanya says, no, 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 no. When you get to Teshuvah del Ela, your emunah bitachon na kadosh baruch your trust and faith in God is so strong, and it's so real, and it's so genuine, that when you just say the words, Selach lanu avni kechatanu miyad nimchal immediately and have no fear of bracha lebatala when you say baruch atah Hashem chanun amar ben Yisroch it's not bracha lebatala it happened it's a hundred percent this was also a mushroom cloud uh, only Balatani can say that and we can repeat it because otherwise who could say that and from here we see mahu rachum afata rachum right so now we said we have to emulate the ways of God. So if God forgives me immediately after I do a genuine teshuvah in midat in uh, in Shmona Eser, then what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to mimic him, emulate him. I have to do the exact same thing. Just like Hashem forgives immediately, so to you must forgive immediately. And he says, "Gam Adam tzayich dimchol miyadi." And so that means no matter what somebody has done to you, if they ask you for your forgiveness, what do you say? I forgive you. And if you put that guy through the process of asking for your forgiveness three times, what happens? Please forgive me. No. Please forgive me. I'll never forgive you. Please forgive me. I told you no. Wow. What happens? In the Shemaim, they put a label on that person. Wow. Adam Akhzari. He's a wicked, he's a vicious individual. By the way, you know, one of the worst things that ever happened to us in, uh, in Jewish history is, uh, is uh, with Yoshka. What happened with him? Why? Huh? What happened? He had this whole fallout with his rabbi. Why? And he came to ask for forgiveness. Why? And his rabbi didn't forgive him immediately. And because he didn't forgive him immediately, what happened? He went, he turned on the religion, he did the whole thing, and we have now Christianity. Millions of Jews have died, and now we have this whole mess in the world. Why? So it says over there that the rabbi was doing Shmai Seir, right? And when Zin Shmai said, he didn't want to uh, finish this story, so he went like this, meaning like, go away. So he came to say, I'm sorry. The rabbi was busy doing Shmai Seir. He took it as what? He took it as if he's not forgiving him immediately. And he what? And that's how the whole Christianity started. That's why you have to forgive immediately because you don't know what happens when the person walks away from you when you didn't forgive him. Look at the repercussions. Look at the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the butterfly effect, as they call it. You know, when the, the ripple effect of somebody when you don't forgive immediately. So if Hashem forgives you immediately 
and you know it and you believe it, you in return must emulate God and act the same way as Him and forgive for other individuals immediately as well. Why? Because your whole purpose in this world is to emulate God. And since you are on the level Teshuvah del Elah, where you're emulating God in this world and you're looking to bring back your Neshama to Hashem, the same way that you receive the Yunam, a higher level, that means you got to the point that when, you're some, when somebody has slighted you and they come to ask for forgiveness, you're in the Teshuvah del Elah zone, which is, I forgive you. Immediately I forgive you. You know why? Because God forgives me immediately. And whatever God does, I do. said you did say that um, after you do that if you don't forgive immediately after three times it's called Azari. the question is how could you actually say that because you're you're out of the picture so that person is in trouble so, right but then I said perhaps that because we're saying for all of us Therefore, it's not... The plural always time. covers us as well, but... but you're saying it for all, honestly. Right, but it's a, it's a very good point. So, you're a hypocrite. How can you say, say uh, if you're not like him, if you're not like, like a Kadosh Baruch Hu, he puts you in a, in a, in a pickle. <laughs> so, Midata Kadosh Baruch Hu, Lisloach Ad En Ketz. And here, Balatanya, strengthen our, our trust, our belief, and our connection to Kadosh Baruch Hu, where he... Revealed to us that a Kadosh Baruch Hu forgives endlessly. Hashem will forgive you over and 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 over again, as many times as necessary, endless amount, on the condition that every time that you do Teshuvah, you're what? You're genuine, you're real. Not that you're perverting the program, that you're using it to say, I'll sin, I'll do Teshuvah. I'll sin, I'll do Teshuvah. It says, Balatanya said, you know, I heard in the class that I'll send a come back, send come back. They say that person, <laughs> Loma speaking law. Hashem mm-hmm. makes it that a person doesn't have time to do teshuvah. Meaning what? You're gone. Go up to the Shemaim. What am I doing here? I was going to do teshuvah. Yeah, you thought you could hack the program, right? That's not how it works. People that try to hack the program, we bring them up over here to show them, you know, uh, we show them exactly how, how it works. Meaning Hashem says, I know you're a human being. I know you have Yitzhah. I know you're going to fall. And when you fall, just come back the right way. Just do a proper teshuvah. And if you do a proper teshuvah, I'll forgive you. How many times? As many times as necessary. As long as you're always genuine. As long as you're always real. And kids. That's why it says, Hanun That word hamarbe, meaning continuous, endless, doesn't stop. For us, uh, you know, Ben Adam Nechavero, for us as human beings, it's so hard for us to understand this godly concept. Why? When somebody wrongs us, one time, some people have the one time in your eye policy, right? Some people are a little bit nicer. Okay, no problem. I forgive you. Just don't do it again. He does it again. Oh, I can't believe he did it again. That's it. I'm sorry. Listen, you know, uh, one time, shame on you. Two times, shame on me, right? Uh, and then you say, you know, and then there's some people that are a little bit better, you know, that are able to withstand even a third try. And what happens? We come up with, oh, no, 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 three strikes and you're out. Meaning when you speak to people, there's, you know, more than three times, it's very rare. It's very rare that somebody does, does you wrong three times and you still are going to interact with them, have a connection with them, or even, uh, you know, have a, have, have a relationship with them. Imagine if somebody stole from you three times and you forgave them. You know what? You're an angel on earth and comes the next day and he steals again. And you know what? He does it again and again and again and again, five times, ten times, twenty times. Each time you forgive him. As human beings, all of us would say, I'm sorry, I'm not that guy. There's no way that I'm going to forgive somebody who steals with me every single day, who wrongs me every single day. A Kadosh who says, yeah, because you're human beings. You, 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 lack the, you lack the understanding of what Teshuvah is. So, the, us as human beings to understand that Hashem is marbel isloach, it's hard for us to get it. Hard for us to understand. We understand three strikes and you're out. You want me to understand a thousand times is okay as long as we're genuine? Hashem is that patient with me to get it right? Hashem is willing to wait for me to get it right as many times as necessary? If you're real, He's real. So, Ben Adam Lechavero, he said, between fellow men, 
we get maxed out two, three, four times. A Kadosh Baruch Hu, up to thousands of times. Not that we want to put Hashem through that, that we sin a thousand times and wait for His forgiveness a thousand times. God forbid, we don't want to go on that formula, but just to, just to make us understand that if it needs to get to that, as long as you're genuine, your Teshuvah will be accepted. Why? Because forgiveness comes from the place in the heavens of the measure of mercy. Remember we spoke about Yud Gimel Midot, midot Rachamim? Mm-hmm. And Rachamim are not limited. God's mercy is not limited. Because God is not limited. If you say Rachamim up to a thousand, you just limited God. God's mercy is only to a hundred times I'll forgive you. Just to a thousand times I'll forgive you. Just a million times I'll forgive you. Then what? You're limiting. God is unlimited. And because He's unlimited, so is His mercy is unlimited. En Gvul Hashem. Because he comes from the place of En Sof. Bechinat En Sof. So because there's no limit to God's mercy and God's capabilities, and, and the Midat HaChamim comes from that area in the heavens of, of finite, so what do we, not, uh, of infinite, then what we say is that when it comes to the Teshuvah process, understand that Hashem will forgive you immediately if you're genuine. Where do we learn this from also? Where do we learn this from also? In um, no, Namidat Hachamim. I'll skip it. No, 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 no. I'll skip it. It's a, it's gonna take me five ten minutes to develop that thought. I'm gonna skip it. So what do we have to do in order to uh, in order to activate God's mercy is uh, or God's uh, forgiveness every single time? Number one thing, you have to be genuine every time. Is it possible to turn the AC? I'll pay extra. Is it possible to put the AC? I'll pay extra. It's not a problem. Where's the quarter machine? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, let's put a quarter in there or something. Huh? Yeah. I can't. Another woman. No, it's not. Yeah, maybe they turned it off from the main. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. And that, so, what, one thing that we have to understand why God's uh, mer- uh, uh, measure of mercy is endless and gvul Hashem ibhinat enso is because we first things first is we need to be genuine every time. You have to understand that you have to be genuine in Teshuvah. If Teshuvah is not genuine, this will not work. You won't have an endless amount of times to come back. Further, you can't pervert the program. You can't. Uh, thinking that you're going to sin and come back, sin, sin and come back. Ki lo speaking lo lashuv. Like we said, they're not going to give you the opportunity to come back and do teshuvah. Furthermore, there's a concept that says habal etahel lo. When a person comes to uh, to uh, atone for their sins, he gets heavenly help. The key word over here, haba. The person that comes, he want, he needs to want, he needs to be genuine. It has to come from you. Habale the one that genuinely wants to do teshuvah, genuinely wants to come back to Kadosh Baruch Hu, Mesayin Lo. He's the one that gets heavenly help. One other uh, beautiful, beautiful learning that Balatanya shared with us is the concept of Chet'i Lenegdi Tamid. That my sin is in front of me always. And we would think that that's something negative. That you have your sin in front of you every single time. And when you know that you're a sinner or that whatever terrible thing that you did is in front of your face all day long, what would be your reaction? A negative one. Balatanya says, no, it's positive to keep your sins in front of your head, in front of your mind, in the front of your lobe. Why? When a person remembers his sin, he says, when a person remembers his sin constantly, and that his sin gets atoned immediately, it causes him happiness, it, it, it yields joy, and that helps him to achieve Teshuvah Ilaha. How beautiful is that? Lastly, Perak Bet, the 12th chapter, the final chapter of Igeret Teshuvah. Uh, uh, Baal Atanya discusses afflictions. How a person 
that gets to this level, because again, now we've graduated, right? You're a righteous Jew. If you're in Teshuvah del Ela mode, and if you're, you know, checking all the boxes and doing all the criteria of what we just mentioned, and you get to chapter 12, pro level. Pro level. What's the pro level? Kabbalat Isurim Ba'ava. When a person gets to the stage of accepting God's afflictions out of love. So this is a difficult one, right? Who wants afflictions? Nobody. But the righteous, they're willing to accept afflictions out of love for several reasons. And we spoke about it. We'll just give it a, a, we'll just give a, a, a quick review. Kabbalat Isuri Ba'ava, accepting afflictions out of love. Tovahi, it's a good one. Why? It's better for the nefesh to be afflicted in this world than a cleanup process in hell, in Gehenom. Meaning what? If you are experiencing afflictions in this world, it's better that you go through afflictions in this world because compared to the price you'll need to pay in Gehenom, it's going to be a discount program. What you're going to get over here is a way, 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 way less uh, uh, lower level of punishment than it would be in Gehenom. Why? Because you have to say, do I want to pay the price in this world or do I want to pay the price in the next world? So some say, I don't know what the next world is like. I'll pay it over there. Let me enjoy my life here. Some will say, no, I don't want to pay over there because I know how much more the punishment is going to be felt in the next world as opposed to here. So I prefer to pay here rather than there. Similarly, the sahar, the reward in this world. The, there's no reward in this world. The reward that we want to receive is only a reward that can be accepted in Olam Abba. Why? I'll just maybe I'll clear this up before moving forward. Is we are going through a physical experience, a, a spiritual experience in a physical world, right? We're spiritual beings in a physical world. So when a spiritual being performs a mitzvah, there's a sachar. But a sachar beha alma leka, Masachet Kiddushin says, or yeah, Kiddushin says, reward in this world is not possible. Why? Because as long as we're in our physical form, and limited by the world that's governed by, by, by space, uh, time, and matter, the reward that Hashem wants to give us for our, the spiritual reward cannot be given, cannot be cashed out over here. It's like a check that can't be cashed in this world. You have to cash it only in Olam Abba. Over there, you can get a, the, the, the reward because your vessel, your neshama, can accept it. How is it, uh, what is it like? It's like a person that, uh, what is it like? It's, it's just that we're limited in this world and we can only accept it in the next world. So all the reward can't be here. The reward in this world, it would kill us. We have to be in Olam Abba. Similarly is the punishment. The punishment of this world can only happen in Gehenom. That's the 12 month process or different programs that are available for those that are uh, you know, deeper into their sins. So what do we have over here? Hashem says, uh, and if you recall, this is something that was negotiated with our patriarchs, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that we said, Abraham, old age, Yitzhak, sick, uh, affliction, Yaakov, sickness, that it's not fair for a person to die, go up to the heaven, and all of a sudden they show him a big bill. Oh, you enjoyed your ride uh, on planet Earth? Here's your bill. And he would say, had I known, I would have uh, done something. Ah, oh, okay. What would you have done? Well, how, well, what's the discount program? Well, you know what's a discount program? We could give you afflictions. Afflictions in the world wipes out 95% of what you're going through over here. Would you like to do that? Yes. And I get maximum olam haba? Yeah, you get maximum olam haba. Definitely. Okay. So, tzaddikim know that they do, that if they take afflictions in this world, it wipes out their spiritual debt in the Shemaim, and they get the maximum olam haba. But you say, but a tzaddik, he doesn't need that. A tzaddik doesn't need that. So somebody who's righteous, he's already in Olam Abba. He's already getting, whoa, okay, he's already getting what he needs, right? But what is it? Sometimes the tzaddikim take upon themselves the afflictions 
to atone for Am Yisrael. We have righteous rabbis that suffer physically uh, in many different ways in, in, in order what, to save Jewish lives. So we see that over here, uh, uh, the afflictions are a discount program to all your, to pay for your sins, as opposed to paying it for the Shemaim, as we saw the, the the multiplication of three times seven. That one hour over here is like two hundred and ten over there. So it's worth it for a person to accept isurim affliction with love in this world. If you're that if uh, if you're on that level, and that's why it says Olam Hazeh Chesed Ibane. Okay, those by who created this world. Chesed Ibane, through the measurement, uh, through the uh, attribute of kindness. Which means what? That HaKadosh Baruch Hu dan b'midat HaChesed. He deals with us with the level of mercy. And because He deals with us with the level of mercy in this world, that this world, Olam Chesed Ibane, because this world has Chesed in it, Hashem gives us the ability to atone for our sins in this world through afflictions, so we don't pay for a very long time and a very harsh punishment in the next world. And he says, he continues to say, Yisurin Kalim Ba'olam Hazed, that a person goes even through very tiny afflictions in this world, Nitzol Midinim Kashim Shel Olam Abba. He's able to, to, to be saved from harsh judgment in the next world. So next time you bump your toe, next time you lose a deal, next time you feel that the life is so difficult that you can't bear it, smile. You just got a huge reduction. Hashem is doing clearance on your debt in the Shemaim. He's clearing you up. It's for the best. Thank you, Hashem. I don't know why, but I'm sure it's for the best. I'm sure it's kaparat avonot. If it's not something that's connected to this life, then for sure from a previous Gilgul. That outlook still keeps you in a state of joy and happiness. And you're not going to be uh, down when, uh, when, uh, when afflictions come about. And... Balatanya concludes and says, Umaskil al davar im tzatov. Take everything that we learned, internalize it, think about it. Im tzatov. You'll find that everything that we learned was good. With this, I'd like to conclude and say, Thank you very much for the learning that we did. I truly believe, Shematzanu Tov, that we found good and this review sharpened up. Uh, or, or refreshed our memory of everything that we learned in the 12 chapters. Of course, there's a lot more depth in each chapter as we, you know, definitely dug into all the text over there. But this would give us a, a good idea of what Balatanya was trying to pass on to us when it comes to the Teshuvah process, uh, you know, with the behind the scenes look that he offered us and a lot of these side you know, these tangents that we went on about the soul, about the shuva, about prayer, about afflictions, really tied everything together. Shashem Barech Otchem, Sameach Otchem. May we merit to many more siyumim. May we merit to come back to the Tanya and learn with the book B'Tzui Arom and finish the whole Tanya and get an additional amazing lens on life. And it's that Hashem that we merit to the building of Bet HaMikdash, the coming of Mashiach, Bechesed Barachamim, Bimhera Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Berger. Oh, the job <laughs>